The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us this morning. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course our socially distanced technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. Today, Brad and I are broadcasting from our administrative offices, and our special guests are Dr. Keeley Telquist and Chris Donato, both from Altman Orville Tuscarawas Health Center. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Preventative care helps detect or prevent serious diseases and medical problems before they become major. Annual checkups, immunizations, and flu shots, as well as certain tests and screenings, are a few examples of preventative care. This may also be called routine care. Preventative care has really suffered during the pandemic as patients feared seeing their physician during the pandemic. This morning, we're going to talk with Dr. Telquist and Chris about preventative care, including everything from vaccines to telehealth. We'd like to remind our listeners today that this program is also available on our podcast. You can download it from the App Store on your mobile phone. Just look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anytime. So, ladies and listeners, it's an exciting time in our pharmacy as we celebrate our 45th anniversary by giving away $45 gift certificates to anyone who stops in to register. I would like to take a moment to introduce the winners of this week's 45th anniversary drawings. At our Canton location, Lois Snyder from Canton is the winner of a $45 gift certificate to Lindsay's Restaurant. At our Minerva location, Lisa Shivari from Mechanicstown is the winner of a $45 gift card to Grinders Above and Beyond. And at our Louisville location, Eleanor Brendan McGrath is the winner of a $45 gift certificate to Grinders Above and Beyond. So stop by in our stores and registers. register for a chance for next week's winning. We are giving away gift certificates to Lindsay's Restaurant, Anastasiati's Chocolates, Grinders and Above and Beyond, and Kishman's IGA. So, Dr. Telquist, welcome to the show. Thank you for your service to the community during our pandemic. You and your healthcare workers um, are appreciated. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself to our listeners. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Keely Telquist. I'm a, a family physician. Uh, I'm originally from Northern Ohio. Um, I was born in Norwalk, Ohio, and I grew up in Collins, which is just outside of that. So, pretty rural. Um, I went to college at Mount Vernon Nazarene University in Central Ohio, um, and then I went to medical school and did my training up um, at University of Toledo, which for people from Ohio, it used to be called MBO. So uh, that's kind of where I'm from, and then we settled down here in Dover, Ohio, where my husband and I now live. So. Okay. Chris, tell, please tell us about yourself, your background, and your role with Tuscarawas Healthcare. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Christine Donato. Um, my role is the executive of the Health for Arts Health Center campus here in Dover. Um, I've been with Altman for about 23 years. Wow. Uh, imaging, x-ray, Im- imaging services is my background, uh, but I have transitioned into this arena several years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, I, um, I oversee what's happening down here in Tuscarawas County. Okay. So, Altman Orville Tuscarawas Health Center is located at 603 Monroe Street in Dover. Can you talk about the Orville name and how you're affiliated with Altman? Okay. So, Altman family, uh, we are a health system. So, we have multiple hospitals um, and campuses in our, in our, um, umbra- under our umbrella. Uh, and Altman Orville here, Altman Orville hospital is a um, critical access hospital with rural health status, and we are a satellite to that hospital. Mm -hmm. So it's just another location for Altman. We're all one one family. So satellite to Altman, Orville Hospital, is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. And that hospital used to be called Dunlop, didn't it? I can't remember. It was, Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Now, 
I'm hearing all the hospitals are full with the corona victims. Is that true? Um, I think I'm, I'm hearing that they're pretty full. Um, I know there's not usually um, a pretty big line at most ER, so um, I think we're seeing a little bit of hold up there, but yeah, that's what I'm getting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go All ahead, right. Man. Well, guess what? Somehow it's flu season already, and we have COVID. So are you recommending patients get both flu and COVID vaccines? So um, that's interesting. Last year, we really didn't see a lot of flu, but we still did recommend them. Um, So every year, I recommend flu um, vaccines, especially for people who have higher risk factors for doing poorly with the flu. That would be um, our older population. I usually have a pretty bad time with the flu. And then our our younger generation. So um, babies, children, young children usually do um, not so well with the flu. So we usually recommend um, flu vaccines um, in the kind of young and old especially, but then also everybody in between usually has somebody that they love that's in that age group. So we do usually recommend that. Um, COVID vaccines um, have a little bit of different distribution, but um, definitely for my older patients, I'm recommending all of them get the COVID vaccine. Um, And then it's kind of up to individual risk factors as an individual decision. But for the most part, um, a lot of people have uh, loved ones that would be high risk if they were to contract COVID. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm usually recommending both vaccines. Um, if we're worried about like side effects and things like that, like feeling feverish after a vaccination, sometimes we phase them out. Um, but we're usually recommending both of those this year. So for most people, yes. Can you touch on what age uh, these vaccinations should begin? Mm-hmm. So that goes along with the risk factors as well. Um, for flu, uh, we've routinely started um, with safety and it's whatever kind of age they are um, in the fall when we target flu vaccines. Um, if you're six months or older, we recommend starting a flu vaccine. Um, if you're six months to a year, sometimes we spread that out into smaller doses because mm-hmm. they're smaller. Um, but definitely a year and above, you get um, a normal pediatric dose for the flu vaccine. And then um, after that, um, you can start a you know yearly dose. Um, the COVID vaccinations, I don't think have been approved um, mm-hmm. younger than the age of 12 at this point. Um, but that would be where those would start at this point, too. Okay. Very good. Um, you know, can you touch on how flu symptoms might differ from COVID or just the whole condition for the listener's benefit? So that's the tricky thing about them. Um, so coronavirus and influenza are two completely different viruses. Um, but a lot of them, uh, a lot of the symptoms are similar, um, which is another reason um, it would be beneficial to be vaccinated against both, because at first it would be very confusing which one did you have. Um, uh, both of them can give you upper respiratory symptoms. Traditionally, flu gives a lot of body aches. Um, body aches can be the first thing that you notice with the flu and um, fever, and then you'll notice some upper respiratory symptoms. Um, like runny nose, cough, that kind of thing. Uh, people don't usually notice a lot of um, like stomach or intestinal symptoms with the flu. That's kind of like a misnomer. People think I have the stomach flu. The stomach flu is not influenza. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you usually don't have a lot of those symptoms with the flu. Uh, now, COVID, for some reason, also has those symptoms where some people are reporting diarrhea and um, like upset stomach with COVID. Um, and then COVID has a couple of weird symptoms that we've seen. Like people have noticed that they um, lose their sense of smell with certain strains of COVID. Um, and so that's been a little bit interesting. That wouldn't really go with the flu at all. Um, if you can breathe through your nose, you should be able to smell if you have the flu. <laughs> so those differ a little bit, but it's really confusing. So we do tell people, you know, if you're worried about missing work and things like that, if you get the flu vaccine, you might be less likely to have anything that looks like COVID that might put you off of work until we find out whether or not you test positive. Okay. 
You know, at-home test kits are very popular right now to the point where they're almost becoming difficult to find in the community. Um, do you recommend them and have any guidelines for their use? So I thought this was an interesting question. I actually had to look up, um, like, what's the sensitivity of these tests and what's the specificity because they're all different manufacturers. Um, but I think it's a good thing to have available if you do um, have a weight, which some uh, testing facilities do have a little bit of a weight. Um, it's an at-home test. So even though the test itself um, rings pretty true, if you get a good sample, um, there's always a, a human error that could happen where, you know, if you're not a medical professional, it's difficult to be able to know that you swab specifically the way you're supposed to. Um, we're very specific about how we swab for flu and how we swab for COVID um, in our offices and in health facilities. But at home, it's probably something that you haven't done before. So there's always a little bit of room for error there. Um, I would say that it might give you some information, especially if you test positive on one of those home kits. I would definitely stay home. Uh, I might get it um, kind of reaffirmed with another test at a health facility. Um, if you test um, negative, however, I would still get a test somewhere if you were having symptoms because it could be um, kind of a user error, too. So I wouldn't say if you tested Or you could have tested too early, too. Exactly. Yeah. 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 A lot of the negatives you get can be false negatives, and you always want to be careful. So. Yeah. Very good. Okay. What about the annual vaccines for elderly patients? Um, how are you recommending you manage the vaccine schedule along with COVID vaccines for them? Mm -hmm. So um, the regular vaccine schedule um, for the elderly patients, we're still obviously recommending flu. Um, if you haven't had your shingles vaccine and you're over um, 50 now, um, then that's reasonable also. Um, and then uh, same thing with like, pneumonia vaccines. Um, and as long as you stagger those out, you shouldn't have too many problems with that. So um, you can always talk to your healthcare provider and we can kind of guide you on, okay, if I'm getting this vaccine on this date, what would be a reasonable time for me to get the other ones um, in case you're worried about a lot of the symptoms from the vaccines kind of overlapping. Um, but again, none of those vaccines would ever have any live virus in them. So you wouldn't really get sick from those. Do we just have a feverish reaction sometimes? So we would maybe try to stagger that out. Um, but I would recommend the regular vaccine schedule along with the COVID vaccination, especially as we move forward. At the same time? Uh, not Maybe not at the same time. <laughs> <That depends. laughs> if you were in a time crunch, theoretically, that might be okay, but you would definitely feel a little feverish. I would recommend some Tylenol that night. <laughs> okay. okay. Our first break here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Are you ready for a change? Transfer your prescriptions to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Hi, this is Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Are you looking for the personal touch from your pharmacist and pharmacy staff? Do you need home delivery or custom packaging to simplify a complex medication schedule? Look no further than the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Bring in your prescription bottles, and we can transfer your prescriptions to the Medicine Center today, where wellness begins. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient's safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for stat care urgent care seven days a week and Mercy Primary Care Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy Telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be utilized by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one -on -one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. 
Cleveland Clinic, Mercy Hospital, telehealth appointments. Learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. That's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance. Copays and deductibles apply. Saving money is awesome. Saving money on items you actually use? Fantastic. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. If you think you'll find the same low prices, huge variety, or great customer service at any other store, you'd be wrong. Stop into our store in Louisville and see what great deals we have. Follow us on our Facebook page at Half Off Store to see super specials. Why pay full price? Come in and experience the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Everyone has been tuned in to where to get their COVID vaccine. We've been proud to serve the community in this process. The Medicine Center offers many other vaccines like shingles, influenza, pneumonia, Tdap, meningitis, MMR, hepatitis A and B, and travel vaccines. Do you need a vaccine? Give us a call at the pharmacy or visit our website at medshoprx.com to schedule your appointment. Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. It's our 45th anniversary, and we'd like to invite you to transfer a prescription to the Medicine Center Pharmacy and receive a $25 gift certificate to our pharmacy. It's simple. Just call and talk with our pharmacist. Um, Okay, pneumonia vaccine seems to have kind of fallen by the wayside here with all these other injections. Um, How often should you receive a pneumonia vaccine? So uh, pneumonia vaccine is interesting because um, we recommend everybody at 65 get at least um, one. Um, A lot of people who um, have uh, chronic health conditions, we recommend getting a second. There's usually two different, there's a pneumovax and a Prevnar 13. There are two different pneumonia vaccines. We usually recommend both in most people unless um, you don't have any health conditions whatsoever. Um, but then going forward, so some people who are immune compromised, um, they should get a repeat every five years or so. Um, so that's definitely important to talk to your healthcare provider to know kind of what are my risk factors? Um, am I in this group where we call me immune compromised? Um, am I somebody that we're worried about needing boosters of things? Um, to kind of know your risk factors and where you fall on that, I think is really important. Um, and then obviously talk to your healthcare provider because we usually have a schedule as well of um, when we when everybody should be getting their vaccines. We try to keep a record for most people. What about uh, pediatric pediatric vaccines and family care in your practice? Yeah. So um, uh, I'm family medicine, so I do see children. Um, family medicine we traditionally train also in pediatrics and a little bit of obstetrics and gynecology. Um, uh, so we see babies, um, we see adolescents, um, and then we see other parents as well. So that gives us a, um, a unique view on kind of the family dynamic as well. It's usually important um, when seeing one family member to know what's going on with the others. And so then uh, also we offer pediatric vaccines. So, so tell us about the Tuscarora Health Center facility. Do you have other services beyond primary care in the office located behind the building? Yes, we do. Um, our Tusk campus is growing. Um, we are offering, we have an outpatient lab draw station. Um, we are uh, going to have general x-ray and advanced imaging. We're going to provide CT yeah. and MRI here at this location. Uh, we also have internal medicine and we are going to have, we have specialty physicians as well. Um, we have kidney and hypertension physicians coming and we're going to uh, soon have general surgery um, mm-hmm. and looking for other specialties um, to uh, see patients here at the pre- at this campus. 
Well, you just answered my next question. <laughs> what are your future plans for this building? <laughs> so I think you laid it all out. Uh, is there anything additional that we missed? <laughs> well, you know, we, we want to be, we are very committed to this uh, community, and we want to provide services that the community needs. So we continue to evaluate the market and look at what the needs are. Um, we've actually uh, created a community council so we have community members here from Tuscarawas County um, having some input on health care here in this community. Um, those, those, those council, we're, we're, we're creating that. Uh, we are in the process right now of uh, reaching out to community members. We have some commitments, and so we will, they will be able to provide um, that, that feedback that is really needed um, for, for the community health care. So it, we will continue to be here. We are committed, and we will continue to evolve um, as to what the community needs are. Now, in Orville, are you oper offering the same things that you're planning on doing in New Philly or Dover? Um, each community is unique, um, and so we may have some of the same services that Orville has. Um, we may have some additional um Again, each community is unique, and each satellite has has um, different services. Some same, some different. Logistically, I would guess that Orville's closer than Dover, right? Or, or am I wrong there? To to the main facility. I'm not sure. No, I think the main hospital uh, would be closer for Dover for Tuscarawas mm -hmm. County folks. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a quick drive, about yeah. 25 minutes, up 77. And the Orville facility is, I don't remember how big it is. It's not very large. Is it the hospital per se? It's a critical access hospital. Mm -hmm. um, it does have an emergency room, a <clears throat> surgery. You know, it provides all of the services that a hospital provides, just on a smaller scale. Okay. All right. Well, it's about time for the news. Yeah, I think we'll take a break here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient's safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for stat care, urgent care, seven days a week, and Mercy primary care, Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be utilized by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one -on -one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital Telehealth Appointments. Learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. That's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance. Copays and deductibles apply. Saving money is awesome. Saving money on items you actually use? Fantastic. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. If you think you'll find the same low prices, huge variety, or great customer service at any other store, you'd be wrong. Stop into our store in Louisville and see what great deals we have. Follow us on our Facebook page at Half Off Store to see super specials. Why pay full price? Come in and experience the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brighten your day with beautiful stained glass from Studio Arts and Glass. Let the sun shine in through a stunning beveled glass window that forms a rainbow on your walls. Commission a piece of art to cherish for years. All at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, or shop online at StudioArtsandGlass.com. That's StudioArtsandGlass.com. 
Poison ivy can be a real pain and very hard to deal with. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Let me recommend a product that I have personally used, Poison Ivy Pills. This homeopathic remedy prevents and treats the effects of poison ivy, oak, and sumac. It's completely safe for adults and children, and there aren't any side effects, so ditch the itch and get relief with Poison Ivy Pills at the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, and Minerva, where wellness begins. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. This morning we're talking with Dr. Telquist and Chris Donato from Altman Oroville Tuscarawas Health Center. We have a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. All right. Have you seen patient health issues as a result of people not going to their doctors over the past year? And can you give us an example? So I think I so I saw this definitely a lot more um, in the beginning um kind of around spring of last year um when all the elective procedures were um were taken off of people's schedules like radiology wasn't doing mammograms people weren't really getting their elective procedures done i saw a lot of problems kind of in the summer um because of things that had had to be put off uh, definitely there were a lot of people who were due for uh like knee replacements and things like that that had to be put off that were really hurting last year um, and then I saw some patients, um, uh, some of the patients had to be hospitalized for things that they probably shouldn't have needed to be just because they didn't want to go into the ER and they kind of put things off a little bit longer than they should have. Um, but um, other things too, like I saw people last year um, where they had like a, I saw a lung mass that got way bigger than it should have been because the patient was worried about going into the doctor, um, was just having a little bit of shortness of breath. And by the time we saw her, it was a lot bigger than it should have been. Um, I saw that kind of thing happen a couple of times. So I'm glad that we're still doing some procedures. I know it's a pain for a lot of people to have to get tested and things like that before they do their elective procedures, but that's been a huge help. Um, kind of going forward that people have been able to get their mammograms and they've been able to do stuff like that um, because we really do um, need those tests. You know, so most of the time it's normal, but you don't want to be that one person where it's not <laughs> and we don't get it done. Um, but, you know, also I think that people have been a little bit better with coming into the office, um, but I think there's still some fear there too. So I'm worried a little bit about it, yeah. Can you, in the spirit of that, can you touch on how important it is for people to keep their appointments and to have a primary care physician? Yeah. Um, I think definitely um, right now, too, where everybody, there is a lot of confusion about, um, like, the vaccines and things like that. And I think it's really important to see your doctor just to have that information, like, are you somebody who's high risk? Are you somebody where, you know, we could look at you and say, you know, I think you might do really poorly with this. So I think it's, you know, worth it for you to take the risk, even if you're nervous about it. Those kind of things. Um, it's important to have all the information. And really the only way you can do that is by making sure that you have a primary that, you know, someone looks at your whole picture and is able to talk about that with you. Um, and the more information you have, kind of in this health climate, the better. Um, and that's a lot of what we do. We kind of, you know, spin risk numbers with you and say, you know, well, with this, these things that you do, your family history, your, how your numbers look, these are things you need to worry about with you versus these are things that we're good on. Um, I think that's a really important part of it to kind of have a good idea of your own health. Um, and then, you know, it's also good if you have any chronic health conditions, that sort of thing, we want to make sure that we're still addressing those because um, those are going to make it a lot harder for you if you do get sick. And, you know, 
there are other things that exist right now besides COVID as well that we definitely want to make sure you're protected against. So. Well, I think it's important that you touched on the fact that every patient should have a primary care provider because in the pharmacy, quite often we'll have patients come in and they don't have a primary care doctor. They don't have a regular relationship with someone that knows them and their family history and the challenges they face. They they maybe just take advantage of urgent cares or, or things of that nature, which is fine in the moment, but I think it's important long-term that they have a primary care provider. And I think it's great that your practice is there now to give extra boost to Tuscarawas County for residents that are in search of a primary care. So, um, you know, for patients that are afraid to go out in public, um, or maybe they're uncomfortable seeing a healthcare provider in person, um, can they consider telehealth? Yeah, I, I think telehealth is a great tool. Um, a lot of what we do in the office is conversation and kind of um, taking a history and what's going on with you, what's important to you, um, like what's your family history, what's your history, and that is all helpful. We can do all that with telehealth. Um, I do love seeing people in the office because I love to be able to, you know, listen to their heart and their lungs and, you know, shake their hand and tell them everything's going to be fine. I think that the personal communication is um, a lot better in person. But if we're worried about that, then I think it's still good to have a conversation and telehealth is a great way to do that, especially um, if you're feeling sick and you don't want to get people um, in the waiting room sick, if you're worried about coming in or worried that we might have COVID, that's a big um, important reason to have telehealth as well um, to kind of at least you're in touch with a doctor, even if you aren't able to be in the office. How does a patient seek a telehealth visit? Um, so our telehealth visits are scheduled very similarly to our regular office visits. So just like you would make a regular office visit, um, you could schedule a telehealth visit with our office. Um, every office is different, so I would contact your provider's office to see how do you go about doing that. Um, but for me, they're scheduled just like a normal visit. Um, we just um, communicate with you in a different way, obviously. So, you know, I've had some patients in the pharmacy say that telehealth visits aren't as good as a regular visit. And can you can you just maybe ease the fears or the the opinion that opinion? I mean, there there are situations where that's true. Like you probably in the pharmacy have seen a huge upswing in the amount of antibiotics being prescribed because there are some times that, you know, we really need to look in your ear <laughs> and that's really yeah. difficult to do over the phone. I'm still waiting for someone to come out for a phone app that has a little scope on it so <laughs> I can see the inside of your ear. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, sometimes if we're checking, uh, if we need to talk about chronic health conditions, if we need to talk about this kind of stuff, um, then we can do that over telehealth. Um, if it's something where, you know, if you're worried because your baby is breathing in a certain way, sometimes I can talk you through that too. Um, and just because I can't get the stethoscope on there doesn't mean that we can't talk about, okay, what are you seeing? What are the signs? Can you show me the baby? That kind of thing. Um, some of that stuff we can do. We can get pretty creative with them, but, um, you know, I do like to have my stethoscope. <laughs> <laughs> that makes complete sense. And in the spirit of that, you know, um, maybe you can touch on what patients or listeners could consider before they participate in a telehealth visit. For example, mm -hmm. I'll give myself as an example. Um, I was part of a telehealth visit uh, during the height of the pandemic with my primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. And through communication or just the stress of the moment, I didn't know that I should have taken my blood pressure or mm -hmm. weighed myself for something. So can you talk about maybe how to be prepared on the patient side when you're trying to collaborate uh, through a telehealth visit? Sure. Uh, so, I mean, I've had kind of both sides of the spectrum. I've had people who have taken all their own vitals for me before I talked to them. And then I have people who talk to me while they're in their car. So... <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's a huge hey, a car visit. <laughs> I think one of my colleagues um, literally did telehealth, and the patient took them into the shower with them. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's there, like set them on the ledge in the shower. I'm like, so I mean, you know, we all have crazy stories about it. Um, 
But I think if you have a blood pressure cuff, that's really helpful information. Um, if you're worried that it's high, we might have you. Sometimes I have people retake it in front of me as I'm on the phone with them to kind of walk them through how, how to take it appropriately. Um, like your weight, that's always important. You know, if you're somebody who retains a lot of fluid or something and you've suddenly gone up 10 pounds, it probably wasn't <laughs> the hamburger you had last night, it, was, it, it might be fluid, something like that. So all that information is helpful to us. So if you have anything at home, it's great to at least have it handy um, in case we need something. Uh, patients with uh, diabetics, if you have your glucometer handy um, so that we know, okay, what's your blood sugar now? What has it been? That kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, just making sure that you're in a good situation. A lot of times I love to do a video visit um, so making sure that you have, um, like, a good connection with your Internet or you have really good phone service at that point um, so that we don't get cut off. All that stuff is important to think about beforehand. Uh, but in a pinch, I guess if you have to talk to me while you're in your car, <laughs> you can do that, too. Uh, but it's always nice to have um, a lot of that stuff prepared uh, ahead of time. <laughs> okay, so they get in a crash. <laughs> <laughs> and the cop stops them and they tell the officer, I was talking to my doctor. <laughs> you got to let me off the hook. <laughs> Gosh, that's too much. The shower story, that's really something. <laughs> or the bathtub story, that could be even better. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Well, why don't we take our last break here before we get into another subject, okay? You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center for Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local Medicine Center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Do you have to blood test because you have diabetes? Is the price of the test strips nearly have you in the poorhouse? At the Medicine Center Pharmacies, we give you, at no charge, a complete test kit with strips as a starter. Then when you purchase more strips, expect a cost savings price of $7.99 for 50 A huge savings over many brand name test strips. So stop in any Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia for info. Also, we have curbside service, drive through windows, and free delivery service. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult days, please stay calm and make sure your medical and healthcare supplies are well stocked. Make sure you have Kleenex, acetaminophen or Tylenol, ibuprofen or Advil, Mucinex, Robitussin or Dayquil, cough drops, maybe even a humidifier or a vaporizer. You can also just turn the shower on hot and sit in the bathroom breathing in the steam. How about vitamin D and a probiotic? So take care of yourselves and don't stress about the coronavirus. Make sure you get plenty of rest and plenty of healthy food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy, Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Poison ivy can be a real pain and very hard to deal with. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Let me recommend a product that I have personally used, Poison Ivy Pills. This homeopathic remedy prevents and treats the effects of poison ivy, oak, and sumac. It's completely safe for adults and children, and there aren't any side effects. So ditch the itch and get relief with Poison Ivy Pills at the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, and Minerva, where wellness begins. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to our final segment of Health Matters today. Uh, We are talking with Dr. Telquist and Chris Donato from Altman Orville Tuscarawas Health Center. So how important is it for 
routine visits for people with diabetes? Well, that one's one of the biggest ones uh, I think that we worry about, um, especially since uh, diabetes is a risk factor for so many other things. Um, diabetes is a risk factor for heart attack, stroke. Um, it it actually it does impact your ability to uh, deal with illness like COVID, um, your ability to heal with wounds. So we definitely want to make sure um, that you are in good shape. So that's a really important uh, thing to follow up on. Um, If you are worried about coming into the office, that's something that we can also usually talk to you about um, because a lot of people who are diabetic um, measure their own sugar and things like that at home. Um, But it's definitely important to be in touch with your doctor about um, your diabetes and how you're doing with that. Um, Yeah, I think, um, and that's, that's a pretty big problem in the community as well. Um, so we do see a lot of diabetic patients still in the office, um, and that way we can check on their numbers and see how they're doing with other things because also routine eye exams and foot exams are also important for diabetics too. So it's not just me. I have other people that also need to see my diabetic patients. So we usually check on all that stuff for them too. You know, at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, we give our patients and, and customers a free glucose monitor, 50 strips, lancets. Um, so tell them before they come into the office, if they don't have a monitor, go down to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. They'll give you a free monitor. I want to hear what your blood glucose is, okay? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we have given away thousands of them, and it's really become a, a helpful tool. And, of course, we sell blood pressure kits, too, very reasonably. I, I don't know w- what your preference is, but the wrist ones are, are a lot simpler to, to, to work with. Um, and I, we're seeing more and more doctor's offices using those. So, mm-hmm. anyway, that's the pitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, what about hypertension? I just mentioned blood pressure kits. Exactly. Um, do, you want, do you want the patients on a televisit to check their blood pressure? Sure. I mean, if we can't get anything else, then sometimes a telehealth visit, uh, if they have a monitor at home, uh, we can do that too. Uh, like I said, sometimes they have them take it in front of me. So I see how they're sitting, how they're positioned, that kind of thing. And we can check. Um, a lot of times uh, with home monitors, I get um, some worried calls saying, I took my blood pressure and it was high. So then I took it again and it was even higher. And then I took it again and it was even higher. And so sometimes there's some factors that go into a high blood pressure <laughs> that um, okay. it's, it's important for us to talk not about. Really, not really funny, I guess. It's just... It happens all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, that's really important, too. Uh, obviously, if you're checking your blood pressure yourself at home and it's going okay, um, then that's great. But uh, just to check in with your doctor to make sure that everything else is going okay um, would be a good idea, especially if you're worried about some of these numbers. So, so let's let's review what would be the perfect um, things pre-televisit. Okay, like I, what would I need? Uh, temperature, blood pressure, glucose, and anything additional before I called, t- called you telehealth? Um, weight would be good if you have a okay. at home. Uh, yeah, those kind of things are all important. Um, and then, you know, if you have a rash or something, be prepared to show me. <laughs> pictures? No pictures fact, of the rash? Well, I, the video is really great for that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if you have a rash on your leg, I, sometimes I can look at it and tell you, you know, what I think it might be. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay, so how about a facial picture? Can you tell if they're peaked or if they're, you know, that was an old word, I guess. Sometimes, <laughs> if I'm on the phone with someone, I'll say, well, their respirations were regular, like they weren't breathing heavy. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't breathing into the phone really heavily, or their voice sounded okay. You know, it's, it, you can sometimes tell. I mean, everybody's listened to their family member before and, and said, oh, they sound terrible. So you can sometimes tell if someone's feeling good or not just by talking to them. But I like the video a little bit better if we can do that. <laughs> okay, so you go for a walk um, with somebody or your partner or your wife or, or whatever. And you arrive back at the home, and, and you're, in, you're not breathing heavily or anything, but your partner is, okay? They're trying to get their breath. What do we do with that person? Well, it depends on what their health conditions are. If they if, if they have asthma or something, then they need to use their inhaler. Um, but if they breathe heavily and they can't catch their breath, then that's important to either call me right away 
or um, go to the uh, urgent care or ER, if, if someone can't catch their breath, then that's usually an emergency too. Um, so uh, if you're always, if you're ever wondering if something's an emergency, you can always call your primary care, and we can usually tell you quickly. Um, even if it's after hours, we usually have someone answering the phone to tell you, go to the ER right now. That way, um, you at least have that affirmation. Um, and if it's too much urgent, then that's always a good idea to call 911. Like if they start looking blue in the face, then you need to. What about the two facilities uh, that you're that you're with? Um, do they offer a no a non no smoking program or routinely or or like a smoking the all program? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think Altman in general does have a smoking yeah. cessation program. Um, our campus specifically, you would just talk to me about it. But okay. um, I know that there are probably counselors um, associated with Altman that specialize in that, that we could always hook people up with if they needed a little bit more guidance. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. There seems to be a, a reluctance um, lately that, well, currently, I guess, that the people don't want to use the patches anymore. They don't want to use the gum anymore, even though the gum flavor has been improved. Um, you, you know, a couple different flavors that I think there are now. Um, it's just like that whole no smoking with all this corona junk going on has just kind of disappeared. Uh, I, I look at... I look at my parking lot and in my stores, and I'm thinking, "Oh my God, how many people are sitting there smoking cigarettes?" It's just amazing that people are still smoking. Well, I think a lot of times too, um, people smoke more uh, when they feel anxious, um, and definitely, it's been a trying year for a lot of people. So, I think another thing too that people um, are hesitant to get up smoking right now just because it's that one thing that they have that makes them feel better. Oh, yeah, and they're hanging out at home, I guess, more more yeah. so and more stress, whatever, whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Brad? Well, ladies, is there anything you'd like to share with our listeners before we wrap up today? I, I think it's important that you mention again your contact info and how patients can get a hold of you for appointments in Tuscarawas County. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we are accepting new patients at my office. Um, we're going to, we're planning to bring some more providers on as well. Um, like I said, we have, um, we're starting up with imaging and things like that. Uh, we already have an outpatient lab here, um, on site. So, um, if anybody has any questions, they can always contact our office. So, um, we can be contacted by phone. Our phone number is, um, 330-364-8889. It's the same phone number that we had here um, when uh, Dr. Moore was here. Um, and then uh, we also have a patient portal. Um, so if you're seen in the office, we'll give you information about that. It's usually an email with a link. You go to it, and then you're able to access um, your um, your results from lab work and imaging. Um, you can request refills. You can request appointments, and then you can also send messages to your doctor. So I get those um, on my little, um, you know, electronic medical record, and I can respond to you electronically. So that way, if you have a question at 2 o'clock in the morning, you don't have to call and wake me up. <laughs> did, did I catch your hours and days of the week you're open? Oh, yeah. Um, so our hours right now, so we're 730 uh, mm-hmm. to 5. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, and then on Wednesday, it's 7.30 to noon. Uh, you can also visit www.altmandocs.com, uh, search Tuscarawas Health Center of Altman Orville, and uh, Dr. Keely Kalkwitz's friendly face will pop up, and there's a, a lot of wow, okay. information there as well. Okay. I think we're out of time, folks. <laughs> okay. Thanks to our guests, Dr. Keeley Telquist and Chris Donato with Altman Orville Tuscarawas Health Center. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to our sponsor, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. As always, we thank you, our listeners, for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week. we see you right here again next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. 
Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Pharmacy.